Welcome to this second screencast in the series on differentiating vector functions. And this is circular motion two. So I'm going to extend just slightly the, the previous example of circular motion and emphasize a few new points. Again, a typical example you would come across. So a particle moves according to the following parameterization. And so now what I've done is I've introduced two constants, capital R and capital T into the parameterization. R, positive constant is the radius of the path and t a positive constant is the period of rotation so r dictates the the radius of this path and the point of having it explicitly in the parameterization let's see if i can do this is that i can effectively consider all the radius uh, the the dynamics of all those are meant to remain circular circles is simply a parameter in this uh, parameterization and uh, a constant and uh, then there's i also have the, the, the period, that is to say, the capital T is the time it takes to make one full rotation, one full orbit around the path. Let me just indicate here, this is the direction. And I didn't put on here, but uh, the question would be essentially the same. Compute the velocity vector, the speed, the acceleration vector, plot some of the vectors along with the, the path of the particle. That would be a typical question. As before, I've started to do it, although I've stopped short in this case because I want to emphasize a couple little points. So the velocity vector you get by differentiating this uh, the position vector, and there it is. And I stopped here because I want to emphasize that, uh, just to get you in the habit, uh, sorry, let me just move this real fast, so get it slightly out of the way, is that you should get in the habit of pulling out of, of vectors, uh, prefactors, whether they be constants or functions um, that are common to the various components. It'll probably just make your life a whole lot easier. So if you're not used to that, um, get used to it. So I'm pulling that out, I'm taking the time here to do that because you would eventually learn it, but um, I'm, I'm telling you to do it. So there we go, I pulled out this, this common factor. In fact, I could have pulled out the common r here, but I, but I didn't. So now let's go and compute the speed. So the speed is the magnitude of the velocity, and again, you'll see immediately the advantage of pulling this out. So now that's the, the absolute value of 2 pi r over t, of course that'll just be positive, times the length of this vector. I'm going to write it real fast here. Okay, and the length of this, that's just sine squared plus co cosine squared, that's 1. This is positive, so it's simply 2 pi r over t. So that now is the speed, it's no longer 1. This, this result makes perfect sense because 2 pi r, that is the circumference of the circle, as I say, the distance it goes in one period, and t is the period, so so that is the distance traveled per, per, per time, so that's the speed, so that all makes sense. Let's see, I want to emphasize now, of course, the speed, uh, well, let's do it this way. The velocity vector is still perpendicular to the uh, position vector, so the velocity vector dot into the position vector. I'll let you do that. Here I have my velocity vector. Again, it's a good thing I pulled this constant out. And here's my position vector. Again, I'll pull that constant out, and then you take the dot product between these two vectors, and you'll immediately you'll see that those are that zero. I'll let you do that. That is to say, velocity is perpendicular uh, to the position vector, but the magnitude of uh, the velocity, which of course is just the speed, is not in general not equal to the magnitude of the position uh, in general. And let me just make over here a plot of a little bit of room. So I want to make a plot of the speed versus t. Point I want to emphasize here. I want to look at the variation of the the speed of the particle as a function of the period for fixed for fixed radius. So I'll fix I'll fix the size of my circle, and then I'll ask the question: What does the speed uh, look like as I vary the the period? Well, of course, it's uh, again just from this formula because it's one over t. Probably not the best rendition of 1 over t, but there it is. So at this point, let's just at this point, here is where the speed, the speed is equal to the radius. It's not particularly important. That's where the period is equal to 2 pi. But really what I want to emphasize is here, when the period is large, the particle moves slowly. And when the period is, is small, the, 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 the particle is moving fast. Although let's, uh, let's go ahead and plot some things. So draw coordinate axes here. Best I can. Let's draw a position. Uh, let's draw it here. Uh, this would be R. 
and now let's draw a velocity vector. That's my velocity vector. And it now is not, in general, the same length as the radius vector. And in here, I've, I've drawn it in the slow regime, where the velocity is, well, it's the magnitude of this is small. In fact, it's less than, than the radius of the circle. OK, so let's go on to the acceleration. I won't go through all the details. If you, you, you'll see very quickly that, that the following is true. You'll pull out another 2 pi over t from differentiating again. So you'll get a 2 pi over t squared times the r times, uh, now I'll have minus cosine 2 pi t over t minus sine 2 pi t over t. All right, so you can easily verify that. And um, I suppose I can make here a little plot of also acceleration as a function of t, also for fixed r, for fixed r. Now the acceleration as a function of t goes as 1 over t squared. I don't know if I'll be able to really capture the difference between 1 over t and 1 over t squared, but I'll try. So the, the, the point, though, is that if I'm over in this regime here where t is, say, large, so the velocities are small, the accelerations are even smaller, I'll let you verify that A is nevertheless parallel to the, um, the position vector. In fact, you might say it's anti-parallel. It points in the minus, um, in, in the direction of minus r. But again, it doesn't have, the, they don't, they no longer have the same magnitude. So you can verify that the, the direction of this vector is minus the direction of that vector, but the magnitudes of the vectors are different. So let me just draw this on here. It's pointing inwards. I hope you can see it. Um, there it is. That's A. And again, this is in the case where, I'll just, uh, can I do this? T is large. I don't know if you're familiar with this taste. It's very big. I mean, it's much greater than 1. It's actually, it's, let's just do it this way. It's bigger than 2 pi. OK, so this vector is shorter than, than the radius of the circle. And this vector is yet even smaller. and. Um, uh, and I'll go on to some problems of a different kind in the next screencast.